Hello and welcome to Talking Books. I'm Jill de Villiers. If you have ever asked yourself questions like these, how do you achieve great things? And how do you create unstoppable momentum in your life? Then today's book is right up your alley. My guest is Eric Kruger, a high performance coach and founder of the Mental Performance Lab. He is also the author of Acta Non Verba. That's Latin for actions, not words. Eric, welcome and thank you very much for joining us mm. and coming to chat to us. The book comprises over 160 emails that you sent out to your mailing list. Mm. Can you tell me how this process started? So about four years ago, mm -hmm. I started a website called Better Man. And a, a big part of the process for me was figuring out how do I get my message out there? And the message was, how do you go to bed at night, a better man than when you woke up that morning? So I tried blogging, I tried podcasting, I tried videos, and eventually I thought, you know, we have so much content out there in the world already. What we really need is just a short sort of reminder of what we need to go and do. Uh, so I started this, this email, I sent it out to four people. Um, the email is typically between 200 to 300 words. And went out to four people, got a good response, uh, subscriber list started growing, and then Four years later, I'm sending out this email to 17 and a half thousand people in the morning. Mm. Uh, it goes out every day. And yeah, it's, it's kind of been the, the impetus for growth uh, in my business. And it has led me to many other great things like mm. coaching and speaking in the book. So you advise people to live their lives beyond the, the everyday thing, beyond words, and to, to, to actually take action, to change their mindsets, to change their behavior, mm. to change their attitude. Now that's quite a tall order. Mm. How, how do you do that? <laughs> and where did you get your inspiration from? So I, you know, I think there's a, a thing in the book I talk about called accretion. Mm -hmm. And accretion is this idea that everything in our life is the the result of accumulation. So the accumulation of the decisions you make and the actions you take. And I think that is kind of how you get to this big, fulfilled, purpose-driven life, is that you become more intentional with the small decisions that you make every day. Because we think they don't matter, but they do. You become more intentional with the small actions you take every day. And ultimately, that kind of gives you the life that you want. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about the sort of control of moment to moment and um, how much focus can you bring to that. Uh, as for the inspiration, like a lot, of, a lot of the emails are just from my own life, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like scratching your own itch. Mm -hmm. So um, times when I felt I'm really procrastinating on something, I would research it, and it would kind of become the theme that I write about for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but each email is actually written every day. Like people always ask me, how do you keep up? How do you, like, do you batch your emails? Mm -hmm. And I've tried that, but now I just write them every day because I want it to be in the moment and I want to share my learnings and, and what is happening to me. So yeah. I think as well perhaps um, you advise people to read one thought, mm. one chapter at a time and Definitely. to think about it over the day mm. um, rather than sitting and reading the book in one sitting. Definitely. Can you yeah. explain the, the thinking behind that? I think it comes back to this idea mm -hmm. that we have so much content mm -hmm. that we end up skimming a lot of it mm -hmm. but we never internalize it. Uh, I was uh, speaking at an event last week and my kind of theme was let's get back to the big broad strokes. So let's do the things that we all know we should be doing but that we don't do. Mm -hmm. Because if we can just do them then we'll be happier, more fulfilled, more mm -hmm. successful than the majority of the people around us. Mm -hmm. um, we always turn to books thinking that we'll find that one insight that might change everything. But really we all know what it takes to be more successful, what it means to eat healthier, what it means mm -hmm. to get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. The basics, yeah. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's not as if um, what you're telling us there is something that we don't know. It is mm. something that we need to be reminded of and, and actually practice it, uh, it for that day. Because That's if you it, yeah. don't do that, it's, it's just like another quickly, I read this book and, mm. and um, I think about it maybe for a few days and then I forget about it mm. if I don't actually practice it. Um, you're very serious about changing one's negative outlook in life and having a more positive outlook so that it becomes strategically important to live a happy life. Mm. Tell me about that. You know, it's a, it's a fine line to walk because you don't want to be positive to the extent where you ignore the bad things that are happening to you. And, you know, the bad things often provide us with the, the it's the catalyst for change. And we don't want to neglect that and just be positive, positive, positive. Um, 
But the truth is that we, we need to sort of tap into that, mi that growth mindset that Carol Dweck talks about. Um, and that we have to see the opportunity for change and for growth in everything that's around us. So I think it's just, it's just a fine balance, not letting the negativity drag you down, but kind of using it as the catalyst for what's next mm -hmm. and, and um, am I up for the challenge that this mm -hmm. brings to me. You also talk about honesty and how important it is to be honest to others mm -hmm. and honest to yourself. Mm. But that's not so easy. No, no. I think that's probably the most difficult thing. I think it's the <laughs> hardest thing because um, mm -hmm. that speaks to self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's being able to look in the mirror and say, listen, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. My life isn't where I need it to be. Um, and then what am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier to actually just ignore it um, and, and look the other way. But no, if we want change, we need to be honest with ourselves about where we are and where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lift out? You said earlier mm. that you'd like to, to, to just lift out. So, yeah, I mean, I actually, you know, it, it's weird because there's 165 different reflections in here. Mm. Um, and they, they span everything from leadership to high performance to procrastination to productivity. Um, and so this morning, like, I was actually going through it and just highlighting some of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the, like, emails or reflections that really sort of encompasses what the book is about mm -hmm. is raise the standard. Right? Wow. So, so they're all pretty short. Uh, when was the last time you truly raised the standard for yourself? When was the, was the last time you truly raised the standard in your industry? It's easy to become complacent when things are working, when you are getting a steady stream of results. I'd like to encourage you to experiment with raise the standard thinking. Raise the standard thinking will always yield positive results no matter your current situation. It's a powerful exercise that will broaden your horizon and challenge your assumptions. This practice simply requires you to ask of yourself, what does better look like and what does better act like? You might not be able to immediately implement everything you discover during such a thinking exercise, but you will walk away with your head humming. Now go out and elevate yourself, your industry and the world. Mm. Mm. Now in this search for your own betterment um, and to be the best and to succeed and stuff, sometimes you may have to hurt someone in the process. Um, what is the balance? How do, you, how do you justify hurting someone, maybe innocent, in the process of uplifting yourself? Mm. So, I, I, don't, I don't think we should be hurting other people at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you are hurting people in the process, then maybe your self-development is a bit misguided. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably need to pause and reflect on what are you doing? Like, are you really being selfish to the extent where you are hurting the people around you? Um, because selfishness is a good thing. You know, for, I think for a lot of us, we say yes to too many things um, and, and we neglect our own development because we want to take care of others. Uh, but it's kind of like the classic um, airplane instruction manual thing where you have to put the oxygen mask on mm -hmm. yourself before you put on others. So there is a component of selfishness to self-development. But the outcome of self-development always has to be to uplift the people around you and the world and the your organization and the teams that you work with. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you are hurting people in the process, then you probably need to pause and just reflect on what is happening mm. for you because it's probably misguided and mm. you're being too selfish. Okay. Yeah. So spirituality is important. Um, it is important. It definitely is important. Uh, but I think we just, you know, we live in a world where relationships really matter. Mm. Um, and like you never get far without them. Uh, and it's part of what makes life meaningful and what makes life purposeful. So if, if what you are doing is to the detriment of the relationships you have, you need to reevaluate mm -hmm. what's okay. happening. And what do you mm. say about self-esteem, if a person has a little bit of a self-esteem problem? You know, uh, uh, self-esteem for me is also part of self-trust. And, and how do we then create more self-trust? And it, it comes down to taking action. Mm -hmm. It comes down to putting yourself out in the world, which is a very scary thing for us to do. But then coming back to that all the time. So. Part of what I, what I talk about is that we shouldn't tie our identity to the things that happen to us, so to the outcomes that we create. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your life, you'll, you'll have certain failures. It doesn't make you a failure, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we need to kind of dissociate our identity from the outcomes. But what you can do is say, well, I'm an activist, so actionist. I'm someone who takes action. I'm someone who does mm -hmm. things. And irrespective of what happens to me, in the morning, you'll find me doing. In the morning, you'll, you'll find me trying. And I think it's through that process when you can uh, 
dissociate your identity mm -hmm. from the things that happened to you and you can go back and say I'm doing I'm doing even though I'm failing and succeeding I'm doing I'm getting better I think that's part of how we build up that self-trust and that self-esteem I would like to look at email 55 on mentorship it deals with learning from other people and that mm. one has to be open to learn everything from everything and from everybody mm. would you like to read that mm. to us please so everyone wants a mentor but mostly their approach is quite flawed Here's the problem, arrogance. Thinking that the only person worthy of mentoring you is someone at the top of their game. Yes, it is ideal, but like most things, if you wait for perfection in a mentor, you will wait forever. I've learned tons from the guys who have been a part of Better Man masterminds and events. Every interaction is an opportunity to learn. Remember, it's not about the direct advice you get from someone. It's listening to their story and how they approach certain challenges. It's about how they coped with hard times. It's about their absolute faith and their ability to ultimately succeed. Mentorship is about you and how you are open to learn from everything and everyone. Fantastic. Mm. So you would say that those people uh, who are really know a lot, they are the people who say, the more you learn, the more you know how mm. little you actually know. Mm. And uh, mm. Yeah, I think you know, mentorship really to me means uh, taking advice from everything and anything, mm. you know, or not necessarily taking advice, but necessarily like learning rather from it. Mm. Uh, Marinus always talks about the fact that uh, we look to mentors um, at the top of their game and we want to be mentored by them but they've actually forgotten already what you've gone through at the sort of mm. grassroots level so it's actually better to have someone who's at the same level as what mm. you are um, and then what I'd add on to that is that you know books are mentors podcasts are mentors shows are mentors so if we're always waiting for someone to open the door for us then it's never going to get opened mm. So in the end, it boils down to conscious decisions, making conscious decisions and living your life to the best mm. of your ability. Perfect summation. Okay. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming Thank in you, and John. chatting to us. And um, just as a reminder, my guest is Eric Kruger and his book is Acta Non Verba, Actions, Not Words. And that is it for this edition for Talking Books. Thanks for watching. <laughs>